This is a second video in the five-story building project where we take a look at the installation of a fire alarm system from the ground up. The aspect of the system I want to cover in this video is the backbone of the SLC wiring. All of our loops will be configured as Style 6, which simply means a Class A SLC loop. For an SLC circuit to be Style 6, it will leave the panel, go into and out of each device in parallel, and return back to the panel with no T-taps. The advantage of wiring a system in this way is the survivability of the remainder of the loop if an open circuit occurs. To better illustrate that, let's look at an alternative setup. We're going to remove this return leg of the circuit. Now we have an example of a Style 4 or Class B loop. It's Style 4 because it does not return back to the panel after the last device. If I had a single wire open at any point in this circuit, any device after that point on the loop would no longer be able to communicate with the panel. Once we add this return leg back in to make the circuit a Style 6 loop, that problem goes away. When a loop is configured for Style 6, it sends its SLC communication signal out of both the B side and the A side of the card. So if there's an open circuit on any single wire, or even any pair of wires as we have here, all of the devices on the loop will still be able to communicate with the panel because the data signal can reach the devices on each side of the open. We will get a trouble on the panel letting us know that the loop has opened because it supervises continuity between the two negative legs of the circuit and between the two positive legs of the circuit, but all devices will still be able to communicate with the panel. Our panel is going to have seven Style 6 SLC loops, one for each floor. Notifier has two different models of SLC cards, an LCM320 and an LEM320. The LCM is always the front card and the LEM snaps to the back of the LCM forming a pair. The LCM has a rotary dial on it where you would set the card's address. When you set an LCM to address 1 slash 2, the LCM takes address 1 and the LEM takes address 2. The LCM always takes the odd numbered lower address and the LEM mounted to it takes the even numbered higher address. In our setup we'll have 4 LCMs and 3 LEMs. We're going to use loop 1 for the first floor, loop 2 for the second floor, etc. Loop 7 will cover the basement. The SLC loops will travel up the building through the fire alarm riser closet. When a loop reaches the floor it's covering, it will leave the Hoffman box and enter an isolator module. After the isolator module, it will go into the first device on the circuit, and then out of that into the next one, and so on, until it reaches every device. Then it will go into another isolator module before returning back to the panel through a separate riser closet. As you go to each floor, there will be one less SLC circuit in the Hoffman box than the floor below it had until the penthouse just has one SLC loop. To maintain proper Class A configuration, the feed and return pipes need to remain 5 feet apart, which in this case is no problem since our feed and return risers are in separate closets, as you can see here. Wiring the SLC devices is straightforward and doesn't require much explanation. Every SLC device simply has a positive and negative terminal and the feed wires come into those terminals and the return wires leave from those terminals and go on to the next device. The sounder base has additional terminals for power, but we'll get into that in the future. The isolator module works differently. It has two separate SLC terminals and has no other connections, only SLC in and SLC out. It does not take up an address on the loop. Isolator modules work in pairs. If there is a short in the circuit between two isolator modules, they will remove that portion of the circuit from the loop, protecting the remainder of the loop from being affected by the short. Isolator modules come with some limitations that need to be considered. Only 25 devices can be installed between isolator modules 
for them to work properly, and that numbers reduce to seven when either relay modules or sounder bases are being used. In our case, since both sounder bases and relay modules are being used, we have to be strategic about where we install isolator modules. As we look at the conduit run on a standard floor, we're going to place the modules in the hallway where there will be a drop ceiling providing access to the devices above the ceiling tiles. Typically the ceilings inside the residential units have a hard drywall ceiling so any devices that need to remain accessible must go in the hallway where the drop ceiling is. The conduit run is going to leave the riser closet, enter the hallway, and then run through the hallway outside of the rooms. We're going to place an isolator module every seven devices because we're using relays and sounder bases like we discussed before. So as you see here, after we get to our seventh device, we're adding an isolator module. Then after seven more, another one, and so on. The conduit runs along the hallway outside of every room, then eventually to the return closet and back down towards the panel. This will be roughly the same on each floor, with the exception of the basement, first floor, and penthouse, but the idea is the same on every floor. In the next video, we'll begin looking at how some of the unique SLC devices are wired to their monitor modules, such as the devices in the pump room, like the valve tampers and water flow switches, and we'll look at some of the other unique SLC devices, like the kitchen hood system, duct detectors, etc.